right, it's packing up day. I sound really groggy and it's not because I've been out drinking or anything. It's just because I've not done a lot of sleeping. I think both of us are a bit sleepy. Are you sleepy yeah. still? Yes. Yes. Better than I've had some coffee at least. We had a great little coffee, it's coffee pod in our room. Um, after we figured out how to work it, it was great. Uh, use it error, as usual. But yeah, I thought it might be useful to just do a little video talking about what I've done with the ZHT5 uh, in terms of the spec and bits that I'm gonna change to it now I've done a bit of a tour and adventure on it. To be honest, generally speaking, really, really happy with it. There's not a lot I would change. The bike rides fantastically well, probably better than I actually thought it would. And it's seriously fun. It's really fun to ride. That's the bike. This is Cervelo's hardtail frame. So the ZHT5. You will have seen recently there's been some noise made about the new ZFS5, which is coming out. That's basically a full suspension version of this where the suspension is in the frame here, but you can also buy like a, a lockout to make it into a hardtail. Geometry between them is pretty similar. The major change is they've ch slightly changed it with the ZFS, so there's two versions of frames. One is for 120 mil travel, and one's for 100 mil travel. This, I've actually set up with 120 mil travel, which does change the geometry slightly, makes it a bit more upright, but marginal, doesn't seem to make much of a difference. So, starting at the front, cockpit is very kindly provided from Saddleback and Envy. So it's a 50mm stem, which actually I think measures at 55, so it measures a little bit longer. And these are the gravel handlebars, which are like 34s or 36s on the top, I can't remember, but then like 54 on the drops. So noticeable flare, really, really comfortable to ride. The shifters are Shimano GRX Di2, my favorite shifter. They're just ergonomically really, really nice. Uh, I've got them set up so everything controls the rear mech and that is up and down on both sides and also then the little buttons that are internal here, up and down, there. Fork is Fox Factory 34s, 120 mil travel. They're fantastic. They're like the top end fork that Fox do, kind of lightweight, work really, really well. The, this little mud guard is made by Syncross and it's one of the only ones that actually bolts onto the fork, which is just a bit neater than all the cable tie options. The wheels are interesting because they're not the same wheel, although it looks like it. So the front wheel is a Reserve Mountain Bike 30. Uh, the reason why I'm using a Reserve 30 on the front is they've got a slightly higher spoke count, which allowed us to build it up with a dynamo hub. The rear is a Reserve 28, which is a lower sp spoke count. The, uh, the rim is actually pretty similar. It's just the more spokes in it, effectively. And the reason why I'm using the 30 is for a boost mountain bike dynamo hub. You can only use it with 30 spokes, effectively. Tire, Schwabi Racing Ray on the front and a racing ramp on the back. So one of the things I am gonna change is actually change these over to, I can't even think what it is now, Big Burt or something like that. So basically it's a tire, Shrabi's tires always have great names, but it's a tire that has, it probably would be used for, I guess, um, drier conditions and would be a faster rolling tire. I didn't find these particularly slow. They are fast in the scale of a mountain bike tire, the combination of the racing rear and the racing Ralph. The reason why you run it that way around as well is the Ralph has a bit more tread in it, so you can grip quite well on the back and the Ray is like a slightly faster tire anyway. The rotor on the front is a 160 rotor and to get the GRX shifters to work really nicely, I've used XTR two pot brake calipers. The four pot ones would probably work, but it's basically, the difference is the two pot is two pistons closing, the four pot is four pistons closing, so two on each side. We didn't use the, two, the four pot, which I previously had in it, because one, they're a bit heavier, and two, I don't think I'd necessarily need that level of braking for this kind of setup and this kind of bike that, you know, apart from what you would want on a proper mountain bike when you're using it for proper, proper mountain biking. The frame bag is a tail fin prototype one. It's the same setup that they use for the top two bags. So these rubber straps that they've designed themselves are designed so that the buckle never touches the frame. It's really, really neat. 
works really well. They've basically got these rubber mounting points here attached to the buckle so you never actually rub or do any damage to the frame. It's basically, what have I got in here? Like a rain jacket, a battery pack, and a disposable camera, and a bit of food. We basically generally carried, most of us carried rain jackets while we were here, because you get intermittent showers effectively. Bottle cages, the tax ones, are the side load bottle cages. I just like these because they work really well with getting bottles out. Great for bike packing and stuff. When you've got a frame bag in here, you can just twist it more to get the bottle out. Bottles from Sturka, as usual. Seat post is MV's inline 30.9 seat post, which is basically the diameter, slightly wider than the road, most road bikes. But it's an inline seat post, currently with a Pro Stealth off-road saddle on. On this side, I've got a little Schwalbe pump, SOS pump, and there would be a Dyna plug, but because I'm about to pack it up, I'll put it in there. We'll put that now. So in there is a Dyna plug, which is basically just easy to get to in the in the situation that I need to effectively pump up or stab the tire to be able to, you know, fix a puncher. Crank XTR crank Garmin Rally mountain bike pedals. These are fantastic. I've been so impressed with them. The one thing to say is if you are thinking about going for these pedals is that the stack height is very high. So you need to just accommodate that into your fit, which might mean your saddle height is slightly higher just because of the fact that the stack height is so high. Now, one of the things I do want to change on this is this currently has a 32 tooth chain ring on the front, which is fine for mountain biking, but I would say it's probably a bit too spinny for this. I was finding that I was basically riding in the bottom of the block on the cassette for most of the ride. So I'm thinking about changing this maybe to 34 and then changing the cassette to like a 46 and hopefully that'll mean I'll be a bit more in the middle of the block, not so much down the bottom of the block. Morning. Then, so the rear, I've got a Garbrook 52 cassette with an XTR Di2 rear neck. This took a lot of bodging to try and make work. It's not great, but it does the job. Heads, I want to go to the 46. I've basically got an 1146 with an XTR rear neck on my Sabello Espero, and I'm literally going to swap that straight over and put it on here. The reason for this setup was to try and see if it'll work. I used this 52 cassette at Badlands last year. The shifting's okay. It's not as crisp or as good as Shimano's own setup, but it works. So it's okay. I'm just not convinced it is perfect. <laughs> Uh, as I said, rear Schwalbe racing Ralph on the back with a reserve 28 on the, with a reserve 28. The rear hub is just a DT Swiss hub on there. I think it's a 250. Ah, 350. And then, as always, Atticus saddle roll. So basically, the bits I want to change, saddle, I want to put it to a gebeomized saddle, which I've now done all the pressure mapping on, and that works really, really well for me. Pretty easy swap out. Cassette, move to 11 to 46 with the XTR Di2 rear mech, and then probably put a 34 chain ring on the front. Crank length is 170, which works absolutely fine with me. Saddle height is all good. In terms of the front end and the stem length and everything, what we did is, I was very lucky to be able to speak to one of Savella's engineer, and he effectively overlaid my road bike fit to this, to be able to kind of go, he overlaid my road bike fit and, and this one together so we could work out the geometry to try and make it feel as close as possible to it. I think I've covered everything. Oh, the reason why I have a dynamo hub is because this is an adventure bike. And I'm a big believer that dynamos are great. Lastly, the frame is wrapped by ride wrap. So you, you can see these kind of little join points now a bit more because it's got a bit dirty, but all this sort of stuff is it's just there to protect the frame even more. You can, the forks also are wrapped by ride wrap and once it's all clean, you can't really see it there again. So I'm gonna go home, give it a proper clean and it will look good as new. Have I missed anything, Ollie? What do you think? That seems pretty comprehensive. Not that I was concentrating massively, but I reckon that's pretty comprehensive. Ollie says it was comprehensive and Ollie's a clever man, so I'm gonna say I'm done. Morning, Helen. Morning. Yeah. That was the best.
sweet iPad launcher. Yeah. Aww. It was just like heaven, wasn't it? You got it anyway. Ooh. Yeah, we slept like long. I feel like I haven't quite woken up yet. My eyes yeah. feel tiny. Yeah, still tiny eyes. Tiny eyes. I have tiny eyes, but you're Tiny just... eyes. Like two little peepholes in the snow. <laughs> if anyone knows that reference, they'll be laughing their heads off. Anyway, that's the bike. Hopefully that was somewhat useful. If you have any comments or questions about it, please leave them in the description, whatever it is. I can't remember what it's called now. Please leave them in the comment section and I will reply to them the best I can. But long and short of it, drop bar hardtail, probably the funnest bike I've ever ridden. Completely sold. I think this is the future. I know it was a thing in the 90s, so don't come and shout at me. I know that, but I think this is gonna make a comeback now.